Hi, I'm Alistair, and in this video I'd like to describe how you can make one of these buzzer wire games. Um, I'm not even sure exactly what the correct word for them is, but I'm sure you're familiar with them. Um, players have a uh, hook like this, which they have to guide over a shaped piece of copper wire to reach a goal at the end. Now, normally when you play this, what happens is that uh, the players start at the beginning, and every time the hook makes contact with the wire, you'll get kind of like a buzz sound effect or a sad sound effect like that. and um, But then you can kind of, you know, carry on still and still reach the end successfully. If you wanted to use a puzzle like this in an escape room, however, you need to make sure that they actually do it correctly all in one go and without sort of supervision. So I've modified uh, the design slightly to account for that. Um, what I've got here is I've effectively got an isolated start zone at the beginning here. This is one section of copper wire, uh, which is wired to a pin on the Arduino here. And that detects when the hook is at rest at the start of the um, sort of object that needs to be traversed. I've then got the, the actual um, path itself. Uh, that's connected on the back to this uh, blue wire here that's going to another Arduino pin. And finally, I've got another isolated section at the end of the maze. So this is the, uh, the end zone the successful um, player needs to get the hook to. And that also is on its own pin. So we've got kind of three different pins to identify the, the phase of the game. And I've got this wired to um, an Arduino Uno, and I've got the serial monitor here. So if I just turn that on, so you can see what's happening. Uh, so I shall now attempt to do it, and probably not do very well, because I'm not very good at this. But if I get all the way to here, for example, and touch there, you can see in the serial monitor I've got failed. Uh, you could light a light or whatever you want. And from this point onwards, if I carry on and touch the end zone, nothing is going to happen. I can't do anything until I return back to the beginning and touch the start zone, at which point I get another go to go right the way back through it. That time I did even worse. This is where the problem of doing a live video might not end very well. Now I might... Ah, for goodness sake. Bear with me. Uh, I'm sure this is making for fascinating viewing. Steady, steady, steady. You know, it might be easier to hold the hoop still and actually move the entire thing in my hand. So, let me go. Navigated that all the way to the end. And if I can make it to the end zone, you'll see I'll get a different tone and I'll get congratulations on the screen. Now, at this point, the Arduino could trigger a uh, relay, which could unlock a maglock or, or, you know, turn on a display, whatever you want it to do. Um, so, yeah, this is how it's wired. So, I'm using an Arduino Uno, but this will really work with uh, any type of Arduino. And uh, like I say, I've got a buzzer which is wired to ground on the negative side and then the positive side is going to pin 6. Um, but again, you can kind of really use any pin for that. And then my um, sort of pipe itself is, like I say, divided into three sections. So I've got the start zone here. This is this grey wire which is going to pin 8. Then I've got the main section of the, uh, the obstacle itself is going into pin 9. I've got the end zone into pin 10 on this white wire here. So the way I've got this is uh, this section of pipe here, the two end zones are slightly wider diameter pipes and I've kind of made them into sleeves which I've fed around the outside of the main pipe just so I can access the wiring. But you can kind of do that any way you want just so long as they're uh, sort of isolated from each other as indicated by these sort of black bars here. And then the, the actual the hook itself that the players uh, control, well that's wired to ground and that's what we're going to use to detect which if any part of the uh, bar is being touched because it will form a continuous circuit uh, back through to ground. So here's the Arduino code I'm running. This is a fairly um, sort of basic uh, setup but you could uh, extend more features to this. So for example if you wanted to have a number of lives that the player could lose before having to restart that would be a fairly trivial addition for example. Um, but we start off with the constant so uh, these are the pins that I'm using. So I've got pin 8 on the Arduino that's connected to the, the start zone, that first section of isolated copper pipe uh, that players need to touch to actually sort of start the game. Uh, the fail pin is 9, so this is um, connected to the main loop itself, the actual obstacle that the players need to get navigate around. And at any time, if that is touched, uh, that's a failure. And then I've got the end pin connected to GPIO pin 10 on the Arduino, so this is the, the success zone at the end that they're trying to get to. Um, I've also, I'm using a, a simple buzzer as an output at the moment, so I've got uh, one part of that connected to pin 6. 
and uh, the other half is connected to ground. Um, and that's just going to be used to, to give an output to uh, some feedback to the players as to what's happening in the game. Uh, so I've got three possible states that the game can be in at any one time. Um, either the, the player is playing it right now, or they've recently failed, or they have recently succeeded. Um, and in either of those two cases, the only thing they can do is to restart the game, basically. Uh, we start off with the game being failed, because um, that's kind of the the start point is for players to start a new game. Uh, so even though they haven't actually failed it yet, we'll kind of assume that the, the last action was not a successful completion. Um, in setup, so uh, the start, fail and end are all using the internal pull-up resistors. Um, the reason for that is that the hook itself is actually connected to ground. So when any of those pins touch the hook, they'll be grounded and this pull-up will be overridden. So it will go from a high signal to a low signal when the hook touches it. Uh, the buzzer is obviously an output pin because we're using that to uh, send a tone output to the buzzer. And I'm using the serial monitor connection uh, just to uh, display some output on the serial monitor IDE for debugging. So in the main uh, program loop itself, uh, we'll change our behavior based on what the current state of the puzzle is. And there's basically only two variations of that at the moment. So if the game is currently in progress, uh, two things can happen. Either the player can reach the end of the game, and if they reach the end of the game, then we'll say that the game is a success. Uh, we'll print a little debug message to say well done, and we'll also play a happy little chirp. This is the section of code here that you would want to add in um, you know, any triggerable action, so a one-shot action that you want to do when the uh, game is successfully completed. Um, or the other alternative is if the game is currently in progress and the failure pin is grounded, so if that digital read there reads low, that means that the hook has touched the um, body of the object in some way, and in that case the game has been failed. So we'll print failed, and we will um, play a sad kind of wah, wah, wah sound. Um, but crucially, we'll, we'll set the, the puzzle state to fail. So that's the only two places you can go while you're playing the game. Uh, the other old things is if the game is currently failed, or has currently succeeded, well, you've only got one thing that can happen there, which is to go back to the start again. So um, if the start pin has been grounded, so if the, if the copper hook has touched the start pin, We'll reset the game back and say, OK, we're back in progress again. We'll start a new game and we'll do a little alert tone to let the player know that they're um, playing. And that's the case with, with either of those two things. That is the only action that can be uh, taken from a failure or success is to restart the game. So like I say, that's a, that's a fairly basic implementation. It'd be pretty easy to add new features to that. Um, but that, uh, that seems to give you the, the basics of um, how this mechanic could work as an escape room puzzle.